I was looking upon a story to enlighten us for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us through many ways, through his prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam, through his, the Prophet sallallahu companions, through the people at the time of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. If you look at Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam, the patience, the sabr that he went through. If you look at Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the trials, the tribulations that he went through. We find that every single one of them took the pain because they loved Allah so much. So let me start by saying that there was once a woman walking, let's just say down the street. And let's just say this woman is walking and behind there, she's got a stalker. She's got a man following her. And this man is saying, I love you. I cannot live without you. I'll die for you. You know, I'm in a state where I want to commit suicide. He's, a, he's like in a, going through a trance where the only thing he's thinking is, is this woman. And the woman's now looking at him saying, that she, this guy's stalking me. And she's like, you know what? I love you too. And he goes, yes, this is the best. And you know, he's still following on and so on. And she's walking and etc, etc. So do you know what she says to him? She goes, you know what? Let me tell you something. She goes, see my beauty. It's nothing in comparison to my sister's beauty. My sister's even more beautiful than me. He goes, she goes, that my sister is even more beautiful than me. Look, there she's there. Turn around and look at the beauty of my sister and tell me who's prettier. And the man turned around and the girl took off her chapel as in a shoe and she whacked him. She goes, you spent half an hour telling me that I'm the most beautiful girl in this dunya. You know, you die for me, you can't live without me. And the minute I told you my sister is more beautiful than me, you turned around to see. If you really loved me, you wouldn't turn around. Make sense? Just as we can compare this to Hazrat, this, is, this relates to our deen because when we turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the ways of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we should have no other way, to, we should not be looking anywhere, anywhere else. That is the true muhabbat for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we can have. In terms of you can have it in the sense that, you know, I love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so I'm going to perfect my salah. I love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so I'm going to perfect my, my, my appearance. I love, I love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so I'm going to start acting upon his sunnah. You know, once there was Hazrat Hanzala radiallahu anhu. He just got married. He's with his wife. And it's the first night. After the first night, he forgot to do ghusl, fard ghusl. Fard ghusl he forgot to do, but he heard from outside that there was an announcement that come on the path of Allah, we are going in battle. Come to the path of Allah and the Prophet has made this announcement. Upon making this announcement, Hazrat Hanzala radiallahu anhu got up and he goes, I'm leaving. I can't do this. The Prophet is calling me and I'm standing in my home. And when he leaves the house, his wife says to him, that where are you going? At least listen to me. And he goes, no. Once I have turned to my Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam, do not expect me to turn back. And don't expect to convince me not to go. Once I have turned my way to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I'm not going to look anywhere else. She goes, no, no, you listen to me first. Look at the love they had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She goes, you know, listen to me. I don't, I'm not going to tell you to turn away. Just listen to me one second. She goes, if you're going with so much passion, for the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you, then do not come back. So everybody got confused. They said there's only been one night in their marriage. Another girl saying, don't come back. She's basically saying, make sure you die. Don't come back. Yeah, make sure you die in the battlefield. So everybody asked her, that why have you said this to your husband? What was the reason for you saying this to your husband? Was it because you didn't love him? Did he say something? Did something happen? What was the reason for you to say to him, don't come back? She says the most beautiful thing to her husband. Look at the, both of their passions. Yeah? One saying that I've turned my face towards Rasulullah I'm not going to look anywhere else. And now look what his wife says to him. She goes to him that 
if you're going with such passion, if you're going with such devotion for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not come back because on the day of Qiyamah, I want to be called by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that woman who slept one the, the first night without her husband because her husband went on the path of jihad. This is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they had, the, the decree, the, the, the level of love that they had. Before we get on to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, let me just mention something else that came to my mind. You know, you look at Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, I've mentioned this plenty of times before. Look at Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He's walking with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's making his way towards Ghari Thawr. And he is now about to carry Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his shoulders and climb Ghari Thawr. Put your hand up if you've seen Ghari Thawr. Has anybody seen Ghari Thawr here? You've seen Ben Nevis, haven't you? Right? Ben Nevis to dekha hai na? Ke Ben Nevis ki aadhi manzal hogi. Half the height of Ben Nevis. And Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, there was no track. You go to Ghari Thaw today, there's a track that goes around the mountain and takes you to the top. It takes you approximately four hours to climb. Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu carried the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on his shoulders and took him to Ghari Thaw. Before this happened, Jibra'il alayhi salatu wasalam comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and says, listen to what he's saying to him. He says, Allah is asking to ask Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that is he happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look who's asking. Asking whom? And Hazrat Abu Bakr, the Prophet sallam turned around and at that time, Hazrat Abu Bakr just had a cloth over him tied with some kind of, um, you could say, some kind of thing, just tied his cloth together. And Hazrat Abu Bakr said, of course, Rasulullah, I'm happy with my Rabb. I'm happy whatever way. And this is the man that was very wealthy. And now he's not wealthy because he spent on the path of Allah. And after saying this, Prophet says it to Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, the Hazrat Abu Bakr said he is happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Jibra'il alayhi salatu wasalam says to uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, tell Hazrat Abu Bakr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Bakr. This was the virtue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us by sacrificing, by loving Allah, by showing that you're devoted, Allah will elevate your status. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. This is my personal favorite story. It takes me beyond the imagination. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the angels are speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heavens. The angels say to Allah, that Allah was praising Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam to the angels. And now the angels say, that Allah, he's obviously going to love you so much and do so much for you. You've given him so much. You've given him so much wealth. Obviously, he's going to love you so much. So Allah said, descend upon this dunya and test him to show the angels that when you have an insan that loves Allah, there's no limits of loving Allah. So at that time, wealth was not money. It was like cows, sheep, camels and so on. So what happens is that Ibrahim alayhi salatu is uh, sitting down and he can hear a sound. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, for instance. And Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said, Who's saying this? Who is praising the one and only Allah? Where is this sound coming from? He runs, he's running one to his left, then to his right, then he's looking behind him, then he's running around, and he goes around and he sees three people sitting there. And he says, Did you praise the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He goes, Yes, that was us. We finished now. He goes, Say it again. Praise Allah once more. So they say, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And they finished. He said, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said, repeat it once more for me. Just once more. And when he was, when they were repeating it, he was shedding with tears. He was crying with tears that my Allah is so beloved to me that listening to his prayer, prayers, nothing compares to it. And look what he does next. So the angel says, we cannot read it again. You need to give us something. He goes, what do you want? He goes, you know all the sheep that you own? Give me them and I'll say it once more. He goes, is that it? Is that all you want? 
for me to praise the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for you to praise the Almighty Allah, he goes, take all the sheep that I have. And then he says again, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. He stops again. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam says, say it once more for me, please. He goes, no, no, we need, we need more wealth. What else have you got to give? He goes, I have all these cows, take these cows. I don't need them, take them. He gave all the cows and the angel said again, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And now they stopped again. Now Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is not getting enough. He could have said the word himself, but he wanted to hear it from the third party. He wanted to hear someone else say it. So now the third time, they say, we don't have any wealth, you, you need to give us more wealth. So he gave all the camels that he had. He goes, take them, say it again. They recited the kalimat once more. Now he has no wealth left. Now Ibrahim والسلام, has no wealth left. They finish. And they, then they said to him, now what are you going to give to us? You have nothing left. Now what have you got? Now how are you going to hear the prayers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Ibrahim alayhi salatu is in a, in a sense of emotion, crying, he's upset, he's, he's so taken by just by listening to the prayers of Allah, he was so taken by it. And you know when we listen to nasheeds and you feel a bit emotional because of the tune and the way it's going or the words that are happening and so on, Ibrahim alayhi salatu felt this through just the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then what happens is Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam says that I do not have wealth anymore. But what to do is you know all the sheep, the cows and the camels that I give you, gave you? Keep me as the shepherd and I will look after your wealth. But as long as I'm with you, just keep on. Let me just listen to subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Just let me keep on listening to this. Look at the love and the devotion Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam had just to listen to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the correct understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this month of Ramadan a means of us becoming close to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us amongst those that month of Ramadan has come and we have unable to seek Allah's forgiveness. And may Allah not make us amongst those that we have taken Allah's forgiveness. But on the day of Eid, we make it a means of us going back into the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our young generations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all the Muslims around the world.